Spoilers are right, okay, nice. The best dream I ever had was when I was walking down the street in the middle of the night and said hello to the postman, but as soon as I waved at him, some sticky stringy stuff flew out of my wrist. Ah! Nine months later, the postman had twins, and then Spider-Man for the PS4 came out to let me relive that very same dream. This is the closest outfit I have, shut up. Is Spider-Man on PS4 the best Spidey game ever made? Well, if you're asking me, you're goddamn right it is! This game was so good I nearly finished it 100%, which I never do for modern releases. And the best thing about it is that if you have a favourite 3D Spider-Man game of the past, there is something here for you. There's something here for everybody. Do you like the indoor level styles of the PS1 Spider-Man series? Great, because this game's got them. Do you like the pure and utter freedom and moment-to-moment -moment crime stopping from Spider-Man 2 on PS2? Great, because this game's got that too. Do you like the amazing Spider-Man 2 on PS4? Well, it doesn't matter because that game is shit and this one's better than it! In fact, I'd argue this game has too big of an ego for its own good. It's freaking amazing from the second it starts. You get a brief intro cutscene, Peter Parker grabs himself some lovely and sticky webby toast, and then off you go! You're playing the game already, seamlessly transitioned from the cutscenes, and you get to feel firsthand how great this game feels right then and there, which will last until the end of the game. You don't even get that whole tired shtick of starting a Spider-Man game with Uncle Ben with the whole Oh, isn't he lovely? He's like the dad that Peter never had. With great power comes great responsibility. Cut it! You know you know the story, you know the spider bite, and this game knows that it doesn't need to waste your time with it. You're just off straight away, zipping through buildings at 100 miles an hour, spinning webs of any size, catching thieves just like flies. Look out, here comes the spider man. Christ, Peter Parker, slow down! You're gonna give yourself a heart attack before you're 30! I think someone's been eating a little bit too much Peter Bix. The actual story though starts off with a bang. You're on your way to stop the lord of all New York City crime, the kingpin, Wilson Fisk. Filson West. And this whole segment kicks off the rest of the game beautifully. It not only provides you with every basic enemy type and allows you to fight one of Spidey's oldest and most dastardly foes straight away, but also explains organically why all the crime in the city goes haywire right after you finish this intro mission. You've locked up the Godfather, of course the crimes will increase with everyone trying to take over. And despite the crime fighting being a part of the gameplay, it doesn't feel video gamey because of that, it feels real. This is true for the rest of the crime syndicates and corrupt organisations you uncover as the game continues, but even when you complete the checklist amount of crime needed for completion in each district, you can still get intercepted by undercover operatives from Fisk trying to avenge him, and muggings will still be happening at random points all over the place to increase the authenticity and give you more XP. After then taking down Fisk, you're sitting there thinking, well god damn it, I just locked up the head of all crime in the city, time to web the game into the bin! And just then the plot then switches gears and focuses on this guy known as Martin Lee, supervillain alias Mr. Negative. Not only because he's literally photo negative in his design, but because his name fits his character. He's definitely more of a glass half empty kind of guy. <laughs> Know what I'm saying. Oh, and by the way, Norman Osborn is the mayor in this game, and not a single person yeah. likes him. That's it for the setup, though, because for most of the game, and I mean most of the game, you find yourself flying around this absolutely bustling and gorgeous cityscape with your dubious white substance, very similar to that bit in Silence of the Lambs. And let me just say very calmly, this game fucking nails the fucking cat infested shitty web swinger. This game makes you, without sounding cliche, feel. Like spider no 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 uh... <gasps> Become the Batman <laughs> I'm not kidding though, there's a reason that saying has been repeated by games journalists over and over again more than my grandma says that hurts. Whether you're stopping a car full of drug dealers or catching bloody pigeons for a close friend, you feel like the spider. There's no other way to describe it. Every ability Spider-Man has is utilised to the fullest, and even side missions have you doing all sorts of things you'd see in the comics or animated shows, like stalking people and taking recon pictures while climbing buildings, and even high-speed chases. And the swinging itself? It's heavenly, it's bliss, it's delicious, and the way the game's soundtrack dynamics dynamically shifts to a grand adventurous score the second you get some speed going adds to how great it feels. To be clear for a second though, most people swear by Spider-Man 2's swinging controls and how realistic the weight felt. You could even stay stuck on a building and not move at all if you wanted, but here that kind of manipulation doesn't work anymore. I mean, you still need something to attach to to make the web swinging work, which does work with the physics very well, but this game is entirely built around much faster and expressive swinging with a singular trigger. And saying that, even the game itself takes a jab at Spider-Man 2 as it stands. 
totally worked last time. You've got some guts, game. But hey, I did love Spider-Man 2 when it came out all that time ago, but taking nostalgia shades off for a second, I don't even think you can compare that one to this for how much different everything else is. Consider Spidey 2 a foundation that the PS4 game expands tremendously upon and being made much more animated and flowing. By holding and letting go of R2 in the correct intervals, and depending on if you jump at the lowest and highest point of the swing, you increase either your speed or verticality. And based on that, you can control how Spidey flies around to a T, as long as you have something to web onto, of course. The web swinging is integrated beautifully into the speedy parkour, and in order to do this in the most natural and efficient way possible, the game helps you out with many simple actions you can activate on the fly while doing the rest of the complicated positioning yourself to never make it feel like a chore. You can speed towards objects in front of you with a quick zip command, link building top parkour into perch launching and quick zipping directly onto other rooftops, quickly change directions with more quick zipping onto things directly next to you, launch high into the air and skydive to increase your speed for the next swing, and I was even learning things never explained in text boxes directly to you, like holding web on the building you're attached to allows you to then detach and wall run automatically, and then using the high speed web zip command while wall running allows you to fly upwards, and holding L2 usually slows down the game into an aim mode so you can put yourself onto objects or fly towards enemies, but if you're already swinging and holding R2 to swing then you can just tap L2 to lock onto the nearest perch and keep the momentum going, especially if you leap off of that. And the first time I did a web swing through great, I lost my shit, look how smooth this is. And this is me only talking about the web swinging and nothing else that the game does dramatically well, like the combat for instance, which if you've played the Arkham games before, you'll recognise, but I found this a lot more reaction based, a lot more skill based, and I died a good few times trying to learn the ins and outs of it. Overall though, it is great stuff. At its most very basics, it is Batman Arkham. You dodge when your spider sense flashes, attack with basic action buttons, have to use different tactics during brawls to take down shield enemies, brute enemies, and sword or whip enemies, but it is also a little trickier and way more flashy and impressively animated. Honestly, I prefer it. It's more punishing for mistakes, a little bit more free in the movement, and it looks a lot cooler, so what more can I say? Dodging when your spider sense tingles doesn't do the Arkham thing as well when the game automatically lets you counter and gives you a biscuit every time you press the button whenever you see the prompt. Here, it just gives you a rough idea when you should probably dodge, and using enemy animations and sound cues is what helps you get the timing perfect. You can dodge away from attacks, or in some cases dodge into them which allows Spidey to slide underneath the enemy, hit them, and then keep the combo going at the risk of being closer in the middle of the danger zone. Unlike web swinging, there's loads of tricks you can do never explained to you directly, or until you unlock them through XP. You have punches and kicks on square, but then everything else web related map to triangle, which can be used to home attack in on any target wherever they happen to be on the map, grab and swing enemies at each other or pull them towards you to kick them away, pull them upwards into the sky to get an aerial combo going, disarm them, and this isn't including grabbing all the other objects and items in the world around you to cause utter devastation when swung around or pulled down. And since the game is built a lot around Arkham style soft locking, you'll find that keeping combos going between enemies by web attacking towards them or launching them into the air ready to ground slam them all, or even web swing kick the arseholes off building is done pretty accurately most of the time for the most natural looking and graceful superhero combat I've ever seen in a game. You can pull off Tony Hawk Pro Skater level ridiculousness here, it's great. Even to the point of dodging into walls mid-air and then launching straight back off of them again into someone's face to get into the action again. The way that health works is neat too, since it's not one of those games that lets you recover over time by escaping the danger and coming back when you're ready or giving you items for it, no. Instead, if you want your health back, you need to trade your focus points for it, which is built up depending on how well you do in the combat, you know, keeping the combos going, not taking damage, etc. Get better at the game, take more risks and be braver in group brawls, use more gadgets if you want to, and you'll see the focus bar go up pretty quickly, after which you can choose to press the down button to get a portion of your health back depending on how much focus you have, rewarding those who adhere to the rules established by the game that makes it the most fun and satisfying way to play in combat, being in the middle of it. If you're overconfident though, you can trade a massive chunk of your focus for a one-hit kill attack instead, which you then have to charge the focus up again with if you need to heal, so deciding on what to use your focus on as and when is a subtle yet extremely effective mechanic, especially in the middle of all this chaos. And yes, all the one-hit kills are indeed uniquely animated and look bloody incredible. Oh, and even better, you can turn off quick time events in the pause menu, yes, even for the cutscenes, which I did straight away, because do you remember what happened the last time Spider-Man used quick time events? I'm going to die! Once you get new suits from tokens you earn through side missions, you can also get new special moves to unlock that build up over time to be used whenever they're ready. Decoy holograms, times four damage, electric fists, shockwaves, iron spider arms, drone attacks, there's all sorts here. All of which affect the playing field in totally different ways, can be swapped when one seems more useful than the other in the middle of combat, and once again all look extremely cool. And in the same vein, there's different equipable web shooter gadgets that can be used on the fly or during the combat for insanely powerful and useful moves that once again look really damn cool. 
all and you'll get refills depending on how well you do in stealth or the combat. The soft lock works really well with this too so you don't feel like you have to keep on going into L2 but that does help sometimes especially when there's a lot of people and you need to web up one person. These web shooter gadgets can be used at any point during the combos and are equally brilliant and fun to use as much as everything else here and the game encourages you to experiment with all of them a little bit to increase your focus meter a lot quicker than usual. You can use basic web shooters to distract people or tie them up on the spot briefly, use ultra powerful web launchers to fly and stick people up against walls or different objects, use web trip wires that do the same kind of thing, fire web bombs to cover everybody in the gucky stuff, electrocute people, there's so many things you can do here and some enemies even require the use of basic quick reloading web shooters to even fight in the first place like brutes. It's completely nuts, you're webbing up people with your cream like a French baker with an icing bag and two kilos of crap. Do you understand why people kept saying that you feel like Spider-Man here then? Yeah, it's very cliche to say at this point but it really does such a fantastic job of it. Some missions you complete make the audience of people around you burst into applause and you can walk on the ground level and say hi to your adoring fans. Or you can be horrible. <laughs> And this stuff may make you feel like you're in Spidey shoes for sure, but that's not all we have here to make this a joy to play and experience. I mean, just look. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. How is the PS4 doing this exactly? There's tons of people walking around, so many colours and textures flying by faster than you can fart, and doing it all at a consistent frame rate. No, actually, I changed my mind. This game is terrible. It's worse than shit on toast. Wanna know why? Because they don't even use the pizza delivery theme from Spider-Man 2. <laughs> Spider-Man on PS4, this is not a sin that can go unpunished. Oh my god. Is that it? Mamma mia! I mean, it isn't flawless. It does have weird moments, like when all the traffic stops moving for no reason and all the cars look exactly the same. That's kind of strange. And Peter Parker himself kind of has a Thunderbirds thing going on. <laughs> But everything else from the sunlight streaking through the skyscrapers, the birds scattering as you disturb their rest, the way Spidey realistically reacts with his body to buildings and objects while parkouring, and I mean on absolutely everything. The way he sometimes uses double webs when you use the quick zip forward command if there are two buildings there for that extra level of immersion. And how about that escaping Electro mission? Look at this shiting bastard blow up everything and I should be angry but it's just so damn beautiful that I wanted to murder everybody in the city! My god I was completely speechless through this whole part and the fact that it wasn't a cutscene just makes it all the more impressive. Also, this bit happened, which was simply funny. Vulture! Long time no see! We're going to have so much fun! There was one part though that I actually got stuck on during a mission because the Sable agents fitted out and wouldn't let me attack them. Um, are you, are you alright there, mate? I think there's a building in your way. I mean, this shit was funny enough, and then eventually I was allowed to attack them, but then, oh dear, another one just buggered off to the far reaches of space, meaning I couldn't finish the mission whatsoever without restarting the whole thing. What are you doing up there, coward? Overall, though, I mean, you have eyes. I assume, so I'm sure you can see that this game is luscious. There's nothing else I can say other than Spider-Man truly is a visual marvel. <laughs> The presentation wasn't the only thing nailed though to accompany the game feel because this, New York City, it's wonderful. Better than Arkham City by far, but this is to be expected. I mean, this game was made by Insomniac, the same people behind the original Spyro trilogy and original Ratchet and Clank. So when it comes to fantastically realized worlds oozing with life, I trust Insomniac with defleeing my dog with a blowtorch. The level of thought here is so brimming to the point of fast traveling being represented by a brief cutscene of Spidey riding the subway. And that moment I recorded when he finds a cosplayer and starts chatting to him left me gleaming. Okay, stop, that's too much. N no, no, stop it, seriously. Enough. N I, I said, I said that! As did the parts later in the game when Spidey is essentially a fugitive and has to hide on the outside of the trams when he fast travels. And this bit made me smile too when he ends up teaching one of the side characters basics of self-defense, awkward handshaking from a fanboy and everything. And the relationship between Mary Jane and Peter, I actually cared about them both. And one of the coolest things about Spider-Man to me is how relatable and down-to-earth he is. Once you remove, you don't, you know that. He's just a guy at school struggling to pay the bills, and that is a lot cooler to me than eccentric billionaire Brucey here being yeah. miserable all the time. This texting moment where they misunderstand each other hits a lot of relatable notes for tons of people, I'm sure. But can I just give a word of advice to you, MJ? Look, I know you and Peter Parker have had your ups and downs, but come on, if he isn't good enough for you, if pissing Spider-Man isn't good enough for you, 
No one is. The way the game handles crimes and responsibility is top notch too. Crimes pop up on your radio via the police scanner and whether or not you help out or leave them to it is left entirely up to you. There's no obligation in the gameplay to do this other than having the residents not be very happy with you when you get to the ground level for messing everything up. It's all up to your conscience basically, which I suppose would be the same thing in real life. And hey, even if you decide to help out with every other thing that pops up, you get tokens for upgrade parts, XP for unlockable abilities, and much like the web swinging, the flow of the game is never compromised no matter what you decide to do. You're in and out before you even realize it half the time. Unlike this game, where you get interrupted constantly with loading screens and cutscenes every time Spider-Man decides to stop off and scratch his hairy ass on a bit of scaffolding. And I must be honest, seeing the combat stuck to one camera angle when you stop armed robberies is a lovely touch. Are you really him? Not just a seriously good cosplayer? Lady, that can't be the best cosplayer Spider-Man you've ever seen. Do you even know what Spider-Man looks like? Side quests and things to do around the city are pretty sweet too, and like I mentioned earlier, all link into your upgrade crafting for new suits and upgrades with what the game calls tokens. So they're not only a fun distraction and very varied, but definitely worth doing anyway. Even better, with suit upgrades specifically, with every new skin that you unlock, you also get a new super move to play with. But if you like the move but don't like the suit, it doesn't matter because you can mix and match whenever you want and are never tied down to an ugly suit for the sake of a power-up. Assassin's Creed style towers to unlock more of the map are here to find, but you you know you are Spider-Man! So it's automatically more fun and quicker to do. There's collectible bags Peter left hidden around the city just in case of emergencies full of Spider-Man easter eggs and little gadgets, and my favourite distraction quest was taking pictures of landmarks. Not only a tie into Peter Parker's old photography job, and not only a great excuse to mess with the game's light to see how gorgeous you can make it look, but once I discovered even this was incorporated into the flow and the speed of everything else since you could web swing, leap, whip out the camera, aim it to slow the game down, take the image and then keep on swinging along without a second breath, I'm pretty sure I had to change my pants. It's like everything was thought of here. There's also some pretty decent pace changing puzzles of a few varieties, both visual and logical. There's timed missions putting things under pressure for you, and scanning the environment is nowhere near as broken as it is in the Arkham games by revealing absolutely everything. It mainly just shows you certain enemies, objective markers, and doesn't change the look of the game, which is good, because if the game looked like this for 80% of it, I wouldn't want to make out with it anymore. <laughs> Do you want to know the best bit of this game though? Like, my favourite part of the whole thing? Once you reach the midway point, you get to fight. <laughs> Okay, yeah, there's actually a fair few parts of the game where you play as either Mary Jane Watson or Miles in these watered down and drawn out stealth segments. And they aren't awful, don't get me wrong, but easily are the worst parts of the game in comparison to everything else. Since Spidey can do all of what MJ can do, but more, it just feels like an unnecessary restriction for no reason and not enough of a good excuse to slow the pace of the game down. Although I did love it when Spider-Man was actually involved with these missions and you could command him to come down and make the enemies frigging launch up into the air like a deflated balloon. <laughs> if there is one thing I'm not too too keen on though, to be honest, it's the sodding climbing. Okay, to be exact, it's fine, but it just isn't that great, and for one of Spider-Man's main abilities, it's kind of shit that it isn't as perfect as the rest of the game. And I don't mean just inside either, in fact, indoors I kind of understand why this doesn't work 100% of the time, because you're cramped into a confined space, and Insomniac probably didn't want us sticking to every single surface around you while shanking bad guys in the teeth, but anywhere else in the game it can often be downright broken. Luckily, wall running and speedy parkour is great, and that is what the game is built around but there are many moments of precise climbing that's needed yet the game just doesn't allow you to do it or you logically should be able to do it but the game just doesn't let you forcing you to awkwardly flip backwards and lose your place or more egregiously get spotted while in stealth mode even in this bit a square room a square bloody room i was stuck in this room for a good 10 minutes because i tried going through what i thought was the right place but it wasn't all because i came at it from the wrong angle i mean come on even the ps1 games got this right and this is a huge shame to me because because the descend ability is easily the best in any spidey so far if you ask me. It's not just a fancy move with no purpose, it allows you to aim your webbing or zip towards new vantage points when you're stuck upside down to a wall or even do stealth kills. And this janky weird climbing can affect the smoothness of the stealth system itself actually. I mean, the stealth system works, it's fine, but this is a game more concerned with the speedy reactions and fast hitting combo building than slow strategy. If you're looking for something as smooth and simple to understand as Arkham, you're not going to get it here. Most of the time you get one chance to be invisible and then that's it. If you're spotted, you aren't anymore. And as far as I could see, there was no way to escape and rehide yourself. I mean, there might be, I just couldn't figure it out how to do it myself. I did try. Oh, and sometimes the stealth doesn't work at all, like here. <laughs> 
Are you telling me you didn't hear that, you pillock? It's got the basics at least. You can distract, plant traps, travel around vantage points and hang people up in webs, sneak up behind people and take them down silently, but yeah, like I said, it's not Arkham levels of smooth and experimental. It's more for the sake of a bonus to make clearing a room out a little easier. And again, if the climbing was a little bit more refined, I'm sure I'd be singing a different tune. How many other heroes fight crime and fix your shower? You know Mario is actually a plumber, right? Now, as far as the rest of the story goes, it's not a major focus. It's as close to a campy, light-hearted comic book plot as it gets, and more like a week in the life of Spider-Man, with all the twists, turns, and darker moments included for decent drama. But the interactions between every character and the witty remarks from Spidey himself, and even JJ abusing his coolers and spouting anti-Spidey propaganda on the radio are all extremely well done. It's clear we are at an impasse. My best to you and your husband, madam. Jared, go to commercial, then fire yourself! Then rehire yourself before the commercial ends. But no, your job hangs by a thread. If I paid you, I'd cut your salary in half. The dialogue makes the characters who they are and the story entertaining. And the voice acting is great too. Well, except for this bit. First, I need a natural steroid. My brain will create nightmares that my body thinks are real. There's the greenhouse. I mean, I know that you're poisoned and you're dying and everything, but what is this? Am I playing Spider-Man or watching a really shitty Shakespeare play? The smaller details in the plot and the thought gone into why things work for the gameplay are what make it stand out to me though. For example, the spider suit upgrades are from Dr. Otto Octavius, who thinks that Peter is the gadget designer for Spidey after he catches him working on his own suit. And by the way, yes, you are actually partners with Doc Ock before the shit hits the fan. You also have to hack police headquarter satellites to get real-time crime and map updates. It's not just a random go and clear out everybody here and jump on the top of this thing then you unlock a thing. No, it's not like that. They even nailed Spidey's character down to the point of an unlockable move in your XP menu that lets you flip around and do tricks to get more XP and focus. And all the side quests relate directly to what Spider-Man actually does in the city during the game instead of just having more crimes to fight because why not? Like in that quest when you had to help out the police and in return they won't tell anyone that you've been hacking their own satellites for your own map. That's ridiculously Spider-Man in terms of how it feels. And there's that part where you're so wrapped up in your hero work that you end up evicted from your apartment and have to stay with Aunt May in the shelter she works in. Or there's that moment where you have to help out an absent Harry Osborne since his father Norman cuts the funding to your research with Octavius, meaning that you aren't only helping Harry with his experiments, but also keeping a business venture for both of you alive for the future once you lose your job finally. There's plenty of personal missions here as well as the ridiculous hero action 24-7 and I appreciate that, along with all the appearances of most of the classic Spider-Man villains we all know and love. And they don't disappoint here at all, all of which have quests that are more than simple running around and beating them up like in other games. They can jump in and interrupt your side quests related to them. They all have interesting plots to uncover aside from just being evil. And with the Sinister Six twist, yeah, that's only for the last quarter of the game to be fair, but their appearance is way too epic and changes up the city a ton since they release every prisoner onto the streets and their boss battles are some of the best in the game. They may be here briefly compared to the other characters but still leave a huge impression, are a major threat that affects the future events of the game and just look at them. This is the dream Spider-Man game from my youth. Black Cat's hide and seek missions to unlock a new suit in particular felt a lot like the Riddler trophies in Arkham. You know, if if the Riddler wanted to sleep with you. Maybe it's time to reignite the flame. And I loved how most of the villains, no matter how big or small, directly tie into the events of the story and the other characters. They all have their own motivations and grudges against each other, and it isn't simply a kill Spider-Man because he locked them up plot. Having Peter working alongside Doc Ock to create the arms and seeing the gradual auto transformation from gentle, brilliant genius to unstable, insane monster is so cool and more sympathetic and understandable compared to other incarnations of the character that I've seen. I desperately didn't want him to become the evil Dr. Octopus because of his character and relationship to Peter, but there you go, this is Spider-Man after all, not psychologist man. More importantly though, the story knows to have fun with itself. Have you ever played a game with a mission involving a streamer sending her murderous fans after you and staging a kidnapping for the clicks? Cause it's here! Or how about one mission where you need to stop a fake Spider-Man getting too deep into everything and getting himself killed? Like usually it's a case of someone impersonates Spider-Man to frame him or something, but here it's just a guy that wants to help out but he's getting a little bit over his head. Or how about that mission that sees you going to a Halloween party where internet memes live? And surprisingly what I didn't see coming was the ending, which I found to be extremely emotional 
emotional and a very satisfying conclusion to the events that have happened throughout the whole game, displaying some of the most character-driven moments in Spidey media history aside from the comics. And the cliffhanger ending is done correctly, concluding the story as telling perfectly fine, but opens itself up for a sequel with unanswered questions and teasing on unresolved conflicts that are hopefully going to be epic beatdowns in another game. This is how you do it, God of War, not by building up the biggest, baddest gods throughout the entire game and giving you the same shitting repeated troll boss fight over and over again, only to end the game right when the actual bloody fight against something new is about to happen. Screw ya! I'm sorry, I still liked God of War, okay? I just didn't love it. I know that's got absolutely nothing to do with anything, but if I don't make that very clear, the internet will skewer my nuts on a bottle opener. There's no sign of a few of the classic Spidey villains either, opening up more possibilities. The Goblins, Craven, Carnage and Venom, Sandman, Lizard or Mysterio. Well, I mean, Mysterio is kind of in the game, but he's a little bit... Hey, what's wrong with you? So yes, I think the game earned itself a little teaser for another game, and do you know why it earned it? Because this may be the best superhero game I've ever played, which used to be Arkham Asylum, but not anymore. The open world is a sprawling playground and is just the right size, but circumvented by the fluency and speed of the web swing in case you find it a little bit too big for the same city visuals from start to end. It's funny, it's badass, it's action-packed, it's beautiful, it's impressive, it's epic, it's difficult, it's satisfying, and it looks a lot better than this game! If you have a PS4 and haven't got this game yet, you should get it right now. You're doing yourself a service by not doing so. And if you haven't got a PS4, well, it's pretty expensive. I think you should probably sort your bills out first. And unfortunately, I don't know any other way I can finish this video other than with Spider-Man, Spider-Man, nicer than my nanny's flan. <laughs> By the game, you will see. It's so good it'll make you weep. Watch out, PS4 Spider-Man. His real name is Bruce Ban. <laughs> Spider- My god, it feels so good to be out of that tossing suit. Hey there everybody, before the outtakes come on today, which will be soon, so please stay tuned, I just wanted to talk at your faces for a second. First of all, to thank the lovely Patreon supporters from the description below and scrolling on the screen right now, but also to just thank you generally for watching this video to the end, this far. This is a big video, so that really means a lot to me that you find me entertaining or informative enough to keep going and I hope that the outtakes will be a nice little reward for you and will give you a bit of a giggle. I really do hope so. But before we get there, I just want to be able to thank the top tier Patreon supporters on my channel. Omama2, Basil, Gamer Man, I Have a Portal Gun, Robert Alamsha, Oblivion Rising, William Sanborn, Exopaz, Matthew Hubble, Zakari, Mills Kahai, Binary Code, Kirsten B, QB, Cyberpunk Symphony, Thomas Olsen, Nathan Young, Chumba Wumba, Ellen Rupley, Josh Von Hamburg, James Nardiello, Daniel Leon, DC Dungeon Master, Braden Kenny, Mitchell Reed, Jane Ives, and AD Thornton Smith. Thank you so much, every single one of you. Can you see that my eyes are shut? No. Because my eyes are shut right now. I can't see a sodding thing. Christ, Peter Parker, slow down. You're going to give yourself a heart attack before you... Before what? And this is me only talking about the web swinging, you know. <laughs> <laughs> The knot didn't work. <laughs> I'm not filming the next bit like this. I don't care how funny it looks. I feel like my nose is being slowly broken right now. But I'm very happy about it, apparently. You're rolling, sorry. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> I can't read this. I have to have it like right there to read it. Oh, and even better, you can turn off quick time events in the... Po <laughs> you wanna know what the best bit of this game is though? Like no. my fa-